Good morning, good morning. It's your girl, Reverend Rashida Lee. It's Breakfast with Jesus. It's Monday. Get up, get up, get up. It's Monday. I know it's the five o'clock, but it's time to get up. It's your girl. It's time to study the Bible with me. Early in the morning. Yes, early in the morning. Get up, get up, get up. It's me, SGS Ministry. Sisters going strong, soldiers going strong. Listen, I hope you had an amazing Father's Day. Yesterday was beautiful outside. Beautiful. I hope you had an amazing day. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 92, it is good to praise the Lord. So come on, get up, get up, get up, and praise the Lord. I know y'all want me to get my tambourine at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Listen, I like that little tambourine. 5 o'clock in the morning, it's time to get up. It says in Psalm chapter 92, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. When was the last time you made music to his name? When was the last time you just basked in his presence? When was the last time you just sat under the gospel and just listened to the songs and just let it permeate your heart and just let it sit into your heart and give you inspiration? That is what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to make music to the Lord. Come on, good morning, good morning, good morning. It says, proclaiming your love in the morning. What? This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be up early in the morning. Hey, Leonette. Hey, Tamara. Hey, Misha. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We up, y'all. We up, we up, we up. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. What? It says, and your faithfulness at night. Come on. Are you faithful in reading your word? Are you faithful in praying? Are you faithful in laying prostrate before God? Are you faithful in studying? Are you faithful in being obedient? It says, and faithfulness at night the, to the music of the ten string lyre and the melody of the heart. I love music. I know I don't know about you, but I love music, especially gospel music. It just does something to my soul. And at night, if you just play a melody, sometimes if you just play the music and just, just go to sleep and allow it to just, oh my goodness, I gotta turn this off. And allow um God to just be, sorry y'all, sorry, sorry, sorry. My phone about to start making noise. Um, Allow the music to just be an inspiration to you. It feels so good. So it says in Psalm chapter 92, verse 4, it says, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. Come on. Are you singing a new song this morning? Are you singing a brand new song? It said, I sing, a, I sing for joy at what your hands have done. God have done so much for us. And it ain't nothing to just start singing. What? I know y'all know that I'm the, I'm, I'm the number one um, tenor on the uh, Voice of SGS. Like, I'm the lead tenor. <laughs> My sister be hating if she heard me say that. <laughs> but I sing unto the Lord because of all he had done for me. I get so excited. And I'm not a great singer at all. But it just puts joy in my heart when I sing unto the Lord. Because I know of all the great things he had done for me. It says in Psalm chapter 92 verse 5. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know. Fools do not understand that thou that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. Come on, you gotta exalt his name. You gotta praise his name. You gotta lift him up at all times. Come on, it says, For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversary. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. Come on, good morning, good morning, good morning. 
morning. God, we bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you today. God, we lift you up. We sing a new song today because of the joy that's in our heart, because of the things that you have already done, because of your faithfulness at night, because of your love in the morning. Father, we thank you today, God. We praise your name. We make music to your name, God. We love you, God. We honor you. Father, you are faithful. You are, uh, you are just so amazing. God, we thank you, God, for showing up all the time, for being a deliverer, God. Father, for being a redeemer, God. Father, we thank you today. We honor you. We lift you up. We extol you today. God, we bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we surrender today. Father, our cups is half empty. God, we ask you to fill them up right now. In Jesus' name, Father, unclog our ears, massage our hearts that we might receive. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father, hide Rashida behind the cross. Father, I have studied. So you teach. I have prepared. So you preach. God, I ask you today to do it like you always do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Holy Spirit, have your way. Amen. 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 Good morning. 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 Hey, Lynn. Hey, Mr. Wanda. Good morning. Listen, we are in the book of Judges. If you have never studied with SGS ministry, we study chapter by chapter, line by line. And I try to make it as simplistic as I can so that we can have a full understanding. We are in the book of Judges and we are in chapter 3, verse 31. And we have already studied the first two major judges in the book of Judges. And now we are on the third judge, which is considered a minor judge. Now the first two judges was Othniel, which was a major judge. And then Ehud, which was a major judge. And then um, Shamgar now is the third judge, but he is a minor judge. I need y'all to remember these judges because these judges superseded. They came way before Jesus Christ came on earth because they needed somebody to. Well, it's so funny because as I was reading Samuel, I got so excited um, about when they asked for a king. And God was taking care of them all these years. He was covering them all these years with all these judges, making sure that they had somebody to help them fight off the different nations. And they still was not satisfied. And I just was like, gosh, all that you have done for the Israelites, all that you have been so consistent, so faithful. Every time they called on your name, you was always there. And they still felt like it wasn't enough. I want you to be content. I need you to be content in your relationship with God. That what he has given you is enough. That you don't need nothing else. If he haven't, if he don't do another thing for you, that you should be satisfied. I want you to be satisfied today. That no matter what God do from here on out, that you'll be satisfied. The Israelites was not satisfied. We find in the book of Samuel that they were not satisfied and they asked for a king. But prior to that, he um allowed them to be led by 12 different judges. And today, we're going to learn about Shamgar, which was the third judge. And then we're going to learn about Deborah, which was the fourth um, judge. And she was the third major judge. Um, So Judges chapter 3, verse 31. It says, after Ehud. Now we know Ehud was a judge that was a left-handed man. That was, that had, um, mm, he killed the, um, the king, Eglon, with a, a knife. Right? He stabbed him in his stomach. And Eglon died, and they was able to capture all the Moabites um, at the Jordan. They would not allow them to get over past the Jordan. So they was able to kill all of them. And now we are at Shamgar, where it says, after Ehud came, Shamgar, and this is the third judge, son of Ammon, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox gold. He too saved Israel. Now, most of the times that um, the book of Judges, it would tell us how long the judge was in place and how many years that they um, had peace for the land of Israel. But this particular judge, it don't have no other information. It doesn't tell us how long he was a judge, but it does let us know that he used a, a weapon from him, from his occupation. Um, Shamgar was an Israelite farmer. So he used what he had in his hand. Somebody say, I'm going to use what I have in my hand. He used what he had in his hand. And I want to um, suggest that Shamgar had the same spirit of the Lord upon him as 
um, uh, as Othniel had and Samson because he was able to kill 600 Philistine with this ox gold. It was an instrument that was used for the, from the, um, as a farmer. And an ox gold was a long stick. With a small flat piece of iron on one side and a sharp point on the other side. The sharp side was used to drive the oxen. You know, the oxen during the time of plowing, they would have two oxen on um, a cart, and the oxen would be um, used to um, push to pull the cart. And the farmer would use this ox gold in order to drive the the um, the oxen during the times of plowing, and then the other side. Of it was a flat end, which was used to clean the mud off the plow. So this piece, this instrument was used in order to do farming. And Shamgar, while he was the judge, in order to fight off the Philistines to be able to save Israel, he used what he had in his hand. Come on, somebody, you know, you might not have everything you need. You might not have the, all the weapons that you might need. But if you have what you, if you use what you have in your hand, God will allow that whatever it is that you feel like you can use, whatever power you have in that one instrument or whatever it is you have, God will allow you to use that. For whatever it is when you're fighting off the enemy. This is why you have to have the word deep down in your heart. This is why you need to study the word of God. So that that can be your weapon. Because if you have the word of God. You can fight off the enemy with the word of God. See. Shamgar used what he had. As the judge. In order to fight off the Philistines. He fought off 600 Philistines. With this one instrument. You can fight off the enemy. With what you have in your hand. You don't need nothing else. But the word of God, this is our sword. This is the sword that we need, right? This is why you got to be clothed with the right weapons. This is our weapon, the word of God. And he used this one particular instrument in order to, ki um, to kill them. He wasn't a trained military soldier. He was just a farmer. He did not have it all. He did not have, he was not trained to fight. But God used him because he knew that he was not afraid. He was not scared. Come on, somebody say, I'm not scared. I'm going to use what I got. So he used what he had to save Israel. He did what he could as he assessed the situation. See, that's somewhat, somewhat like David. David assessed the situation and David used what he had in his hand in order to kill his enemy. See, you got to not be afraid to use what you have. David felt like I was able to kill lions and bears to get them away from my sheep. I know I can kill this Philistine giant. And this is the same way Shamgar felt. Like I'm able to kill and destroy whatever comes my way. I'm not afraid. So whatever I have in my hand, I'm going to use. So do not be afraid to use what you have already. It says that this eight foot long ancient ox gold had been found in times of crisis. They could it could easily have been used as spears, as as in Shamgar's case. So that's what Shamgar used as if it was a spear. Um, ox golds are still used in the Middle East to drive oxen. So they're still using these ox golds today, um, as they still are using oxen oxen to plow the grain and to plow the grounds. We don't use oxen, of course, because. We just go to work and do what we have to do. But in order for them to be able to get the grain from the ground and to, to tool the fields, they need oxen. So Shamgar was the third um, judge that was used at this time to save Israel. Then in Judges chapter 4, this is the third period of the judges. However, after Shamgar it doesn't say if he died or what happened, but after he was no longer the judge, it says that again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Every time they were saved with by a judge and then the judge would die, they would begin to do evil in the eyes of the Lord again. And it says again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan. What just every time. They would do wrong. God would sell them into the hands of their enemy. I don't want God to send us into the hands of our enemy because we are being disobedient. You got to be so mindful of what you're doing and not being disobedient. So God won't allow the enemy to destroy you. See, in the book of Job, we know that God gave him permission to search all over, to find somebody that was not faithful, to try to find somebody that he could kill and destroy 
And God allows the enemy. He allows the enemy. He he actually hands hand you to the enemy and say, now see what you can do. But I know she's faithful. I know he's faithful. I know he's not disobedient. I know he's not going to speak against me. I know he's not going to put his mouth on me. I know he's going to remain in love with me. No matter how bad you try to kill him, no matter how bad you try to destroy his family, his household, no matter how bad you try to destroy his finances, you know, you try to put boils all over the body, try to destroy their body. They're going to still love me. And God allows the enemy to destroy us. He gives him permission, just as he did in the book of Judges. He always handed the Israelites into the hand of their enemy. This is why you got to stay faithful. This is why you got to continue to read the word because God said, I know she's faithful enough. Now I'm going to test her faith. How do he test your faith? He tests your faith by opportunities for the enemy to try to destroy you in areas that he knows you are weak in. This is why you can't keep going back playing with your past. This is why you can't go keep going back, you know, touching stuff that you know is not like God. I'm telling you, a lot of times we feel like it ain't going to be that bad. It's not going to be, it ain't going to be that bad. But that will be the opportunity that God will send you in the hands of the enemy because you are weak in that area. And everybody around you might not think you're weak because you seem really strong in a certain area. But it's that one area that God said, now test her. And that will be the opportunity to use your sword, to, lose, to use your word to come up against the enemy. But a lot of times we fall for it. Why? Because we are weak and we let the flesh take over. And this is why the Israelites continue to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. Every time the enemy came up against them, they fell right back. They fell right back. We cannot keep falling back, y'all. Please, I know a lot of us on here that's on here this morning has been so faithful and so consistent in the word of God. And I know it's many times that you feel like, I ain't doing that. Like, I've been studying too much. I ain't going back there. Like, why would I do that? Why would I keep doing evil in the eyes of the Lord when I'm studying, when I know what God to do? He's nowhere. He's no, he, <laughs> I said nowhere. He's nothing like how he was in the Old Testament. The wrath of God was crazy. Thank God for the blood. But I thank God that we have a decision to make every day. That every morning, every evening, we can make a decision to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not messing up. I'm not going to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. If the enemy try to distract me, if the enemy try to come for me, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my sword. I'm going to use my word. I'm going to come up against the enemy and use my words. But the Israelites did not do that. They did not use the commands that they knew. They knew not to have idols. They knew what not to do. But we are so quick to jump back into sin. It's so easy to have idols. It's so easy to have sexual immorality. It's so easy to allow our flesh to take over. And, and God said, no, I'm not going to keep letting it happen. It says, let's go to Judges chapter 4. It says, that again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now that Ehud was dead, so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Caesarea, the commander of his army, was based in Harasheth Hagoiah, because he had 900 chariots. Now, these chariots were not just like a little horse and buggy. These chariots was actually, some of them was made out of iron and some was made out of wood. But the one thing about these chariots, they carried either one or two horses, but some of them had like razor sharp knives extended from the wheels at the end. So it was able to mutilate the foot soldiers. So whenever they would come out to fight the commanders of these armies, whenever they came out to fight, they would be able to drive these chariots and whatever soldiers they were about to fight that was on the ground, the actual, um, the razor sharp knife that was extended from the wheels, it will be able to slice the ankles of the foot soldiers that they were fighting. So they had so much more advantage over the Israelites because of these chariots. And the Israelites was not trained with this type of, um, these type of weapons. So they was able to basically, um, they was actually able to have more advantage over the Israelites for the fight for them to be under the rule of the um of Jabin and the king of um Canaan. 
So these chariots that was made of iron, they had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. For 20 years, they was oppressed. Why would you keep going back into sin? Why would you keep doing evil in the eyes of the Lord? If you know every single time that you are put into the hands of the enemy, you will be oppressed for years. Every time they would do evil, God will oppress them in the hands of their enemy. Now they're oppressed for 20 years. And it says, after the 20 years, they cried for help to the Lord. And guess what? Every time they cried out for help, because God is in love with the Israelites, they was his first love. Because they cried out to the Lord, he sent help. Just like when we cry out to Jesus Christ, he will send help. Of the moment you cry out, he sends help. And every time we read in the book of Judges that they cry out, he sends help. It says, now, Deborah, somebody say the help comes from a woman as well. <laughs> Deborah, in the, when, he, when they called out for help, God sent the woman. And this woman was a prophet. The wife of Labadol, Labadoth was leading Israel at that time. Do you know that God will use whoever he needs to get the job done? If he got to use a woman, he will do that. And that's what he done. He used a woman. She was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah, which means they came to her with decisions to be made. They came to her to ask her for questions. What needs to be done at the time while, they was, while she was in position? And she will make decisions for them. She will help them to be able to handle disputes. She will help them as the judge at this particular time. And I'm su I'm sure she was very um I'm sure she was very kind. I'm sure she was very nurturing. I'm sure she wasn't very hard. I'm sure that she made sure that she was fair, right? And it says she held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. Now, her home was between Ramah and Bethel. So she lived in that area. And it says, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. Now, they went to her to find out what is it that we can do because we just keep being oppressed by them and we need help. And it says she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam. Now, when they asked for help, she sent help. She sent for help, which was through a man named Barak. It says from Kadesh and Naphtali and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel commands you. Now he have orders from Deborah through the Lord. It says, go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Caesarea, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Now, how was this woman able to lead Caesarea to into the hands of um, Barak at the Kishon River? Maybe she used, <laughs> one time we talked about on Bible study, how do you use your femininity? How would you be able to use what you have to get what you want? Well, Deborah used what she had to get what she wanted. She was able to use her femininity. She was able to probably be um a little flirtatious, try to probably be really nice, you know, try to be a little cunning. Come on, come on, what are you doing, Cesaria? Come here, come here. You know, trying to be really, really sensual. How was Deborah? Did she use her power? What did she use to be able to try to direct Caesarea and his chariots to the Kishon River so that now Barak and his 10,000 troops can kill them? She used what she had to get what she want. And most time women have the power that they have inside them. They don't even use the power that they have to get what they want. She was able to use that power, but she wanted to direct Barack first to do what he was supposed to do so that she could actually do what she said. Right? But this is how the story goes. It says, verse 8, Judges chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Barack said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. She gave him commands. She gave him orders to go with your 10,000 troops so that you could be prepared to kill them. 
But he was so afraid. Was he afraid? Was he scared? What was wrong with Barack? That he said, if you don't go with me, I will not go. He needed this woman to go with him in order to do what was commanded by the Lord. What? He needed a woman? You need a woman to go with you? You're a man. You are the one that God called to do the job. But you need me, a faithful woman who is not afraid. Um, um, uh, Deborah was not afraid to call on God for help. She like, what? What's wrong with you? Like you're a, you're a man. Do what I told you to do. She says, certainly I will go with you. She's not afraid. Come on. I'm telling you women of God, you cannot be afraid to do the work of the Lord. You cannot be afraid to fight. You cannot feel like you need somebody to go with you or to do it with you. I'm telling you that you have the power inside of you. God called you to it. He will provide. He will do it as necessary. You don't need nobody to go with you. God will go with you. He will go before you. He will put a hedge of protection around you. He will let, not let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon you. And Deborah was not afraid. She was not scared to do what was necessary. She was ready to fight. When the Israelites came to her for help, she said, I got y'all. But I'm going to go get Barak. And here Barak said, I need you to go with me. It says, certainly I will go, said Deborah. I'm in Judges chapter 4, verse 9. But because, this is what she said to Barak. She said, but because of the course you are taking, because you don't want to do what I say, because you're changing the order of the command, because you're not doing it in the order that I commanded you to do it, she says, the honor will be not yours. You will not be rewarded for what you're about to do because it's going to get done. It got to get done. I commanded you to do it, so it got to get done. But you will not receive a trophy. You will not receive a reward for what's going to happen. It says, for the Lord will deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. <laughs> Somebody say, I will kill the enemy as a woman. I don't have a problem with killing the enemy. I will slay a demon in the name of Jesus. I will not be afraid to kill the enemy with the word of the Lord. You cannot be afraid to kill the demon that's set before you. And she said, because you changed the commands of what I gave you, you will not be honored and it will go into the hands of a woman. You know, I preached this sermon before and I preached about woman, woman, wonder woman. And wonder woman said to her mom, if I don't go, it won't happen. She knew as Wonder Woman, she said, if I don't go, if I don't go, what will happen? I need to be there. It won't happen without me. And some of us, I'm telling you, it won't happen if you don't do it. It won't happen if you don't go. It won't happen if you don't make the decision. If you don't set it up, it won't happen. A lot of our families and our children are dying because we won't take the stand. We waiting for somebody to come and help us. We waiting for somebody to come along with us. We waiting for somebody to help to hold our hand. And God said, I gave you the power to do it. You have to do the work. And don't be afraid as a woman. You got the power. It says in Judges chapter 4, verse 9, it says, So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. She like, look, well, come on. Come on, I got this. Let's go. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now she gave him the courage. <laughs> Some of us need help so that we can have courage, right? But when it's time to fight, ain't nobody got time to be waiting on you. But Barak got courage from this faithful woman. It says in verse 11, now Heber, the Kenite, had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobad, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zananim near Kadesh. When they told Caesarea that Barak, son of Ebonon, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Caesarea summoned from Harasheth, Hagoeum, to the Kishon River, all his men, and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. They was directed to the place that Deborah said that she was going to lead them. Look how God still found a way for them to get to the Kishon River. It says, then Deborah said to Barak, go, 
This is the day of the Lord has given Caesarea into your hands. She said, go. Now is your time. It says, has not the Lord gone ahead of you? She's saying to Barak, she's trying to hype him up. She said, come on, having the Lord gone before you? Go. I'm telling you, this is the day that the Lord has given Caesarea into your hands. Don't be afraid. You got this. Come on. You are a warrior. You can do it. I called on you for a reason because I knew you had the power. She had to hype him up. She had to get him in position. And she said, she said, has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down. <laughs> Somebody said he felt he got excited. He got excited. He like, yeah, I can do it. I know I can do it. So he, Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Caesarea and all his chariots and the army by the sword. And Caesarea got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Now look at this. What Deborah said happened. The Lord See, you think you're going to have to fight. You're not going to have to fight. God will fight your battle. You just got to get in position. Deborah told Barack what was going to happen, but he had to get in position. When he stood in front of the army and all 10,000 men around him, God seeing that he was now ready, he then moved on his behalf. I'm telling you that when it's time to fight, God will do the work. God will fight your battles. You don't have to do a thing. You just got to show up. You got to show up not afraid. You got to show up with the power. You got to show up knowing that God will do the work. And what happened? The Lord routed Caesarea and all his chariots and army by the sword. The Lord will do the work. Come on. Us studying the word is us getting in position. Us reading the word daily is us getting in position. You have to continue to stay on your post. You cannot come down. Somebody say, I'm not coming down for nobody. Don't come down. You cannot come down off your post because the enemy is waiting for you to fall. He's waiting for you to fail. He's waiting for you not to be consistent. He's waiting for you to not have, not have contentment. I'm telling you, he's waiting. And because... um. Deborah had to get Barack in a position to say, get in your position, stand who you are, who you are. You are the commander of the army. Know who you are. See, Barack didn't know who he was. You got to know who you are in God. You got to know that I'm a glory carrier. That when I show up, the atmosphere shift. That when I begin to speak, everything changes. When I speak to the enemy, he will flee. You got to know who you are. You got to know that you are an overcomer. You got to know that you are a king's kid. You got you to gotta know that you are an heir to the throne. That I'm a royal priesthood. Who are you in God? Barack didn't realize that he was the commander of the army. When he spoke, they moved. <laughs> Whatever you say in your house, they will do it. You got to know who you are in your position. You don't need a title. You just got to know who I am in God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the, I'm telling you, you got to know who you are. And see, when you know who you are, you can command the thing. You don't got to back down. You don't got to be afraid no more. You can stand flat footed in the word of God. And Barack was not, he did not know who he was. He didn't realize how much power he had. But I want you to know this morning as a woman of faith, you have power to fight. It says, Judges chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harasheth, Hagoeum, and all Caesarea's troops fell by the sword. How in the world did that happen when they had the chariots that had all the, um, the iron pieces sticking out of their, uh, the, out, out of their, uh, chariots? And they was able to mutilate the legs of the soldiers. But God, when God fight your battle, he will destroy any weapon that comes up against you. This is why you got to know that the weapon will form. They formed the weapons on their chariots. They was prepared to fight. There are 900 chariots. That means they had 900 men on these chariots. But God will do the work. 
I'm telling you, any weapon that will form, it will form, but it shall not prosper. The weapons was formed for Caesarea's troops, but they didn't realize the power that came from the woman Deborah when she sent out orders to Barak. They didn't realize that when she sent out the orders, the orders were not only sent out by her, but it was sent out by the Lord. And the Lord will destroy. It says, they fell by the sword, not a man was left. <laughs> come on, when you come to fight, not one person will be left. Not one. All 900 troops fell by the sword. They was able to kill every single one. But Caesarea, he was the king. Wait, let me find out what Caesarea was. I want to say it right. Caesarea, by him being the commander of the army, with um, Jabin, the king of Canaan, he was the commander of their army, right? He was able to get away. He jumped off of the chariot and he ran on foot. It says Caesarea, meanwhile, fled on foot. To the tent of JL. Now he ran and he left all his troops. How can you be the commander, the leader, and you leave all your troops behind? The leader is supposed to fight with their troops. You're not supposed to leave your troops. I would never leave you. The same way God said I would never leave you nor forsake you. We as leaders cannot leave the people behind. You don't leave your loved ones behind. You don't leave your family behind when you see them dying, when you see them suffering. When you see them, can't, they barely can stand on two feet. You don't leave them behind. It's your job to stay with them. It's your job to fight with them. It's your job to stay on the front line with them. But Caesarea, he left. What? How are you going to be the commander and you leave? It says he fled on foot. And as he fled, he went to the tent of Jael. The wife of Hebar, Hebar the Kenite. Because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the family of Heber, the Kenite, Jael went out to meet Caesarea. Now, she went out, right? <laughs> she used what she had, too. <laughs> Somebody said, use what you got. She went out and used her femininity. Hey, Caesarea, what's up? How you doing, boo? How you doing? Where you coming from? Why you breathing so hard? Why you sweating like that? What's going on with you? Now, she knew about Caesarea. She knew that he was an enemy to the Israelites. She knew. However, she wasn't part of the fight. But because she understood what was going on, she used her femininity to, to draw him in. She drew him into her tent. Now, in those times, women was not allowed to have men in their tent. They were not allowed to have men in their tent. So, it says, Jael went out to meet Caesarea and said to him, Come, my lord. Come right in. Don't be afraid. Now, you know she was being like, come on. You can come in. Don't be scared. Come on. Come on. You can come on in. Now, mind you, it must not have been no people around. Because she would have never did that if other people was around. Because they would have told her that he could not come in there. He's a commander of an army. He is not able to be in your tent. However, she said, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent. He knew better. She covered him with a blanket. She had a strategy. She was quick on her feet. She was quick in her thoughts. She seen the enemy coming. And she immediately went into um, strategy mode. She like, I got to do something. And didn't it say, didn't Deborah say that Barack wouldn't get the honor because Caesarea would be handed into the hand of a woman? How did she know that? Because she was a prophet of the Lord. And God already had allowed her to know what, the, what, what, what was going to happen. She understood. So that she kept her ear to God. So she understood what God said. And she didn't know how it was going to happen. But when a prophet speaks, they know that it will come to pass. Well, look how fast what she said came to pass. That Caesarea was handed into the hand of a woman. And Barak, even though they killed every single chariot, every single man on those chariots, all 900 of them, they were still not able to kill Caesarea because of the word of the Lord from the prophet that it will be into the hands of a woman. I'm going to go back. It says, 
Judges chapter 4, verse 9. I want to remind you where it says that at. It says, certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, because you don't want to do what I told you to do, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. She's a prophet. A prophet speaks what the Lord tells them. That's what a prophet does. A prophet, I know a lot of times we hear about prophets nowadays, and they say you're going to get a house, you're going to get a car, money's coming your way. You know, they have all these big things to, to say about your life, and you're like, I'm waiting for the prophet to come. I'm waiting for the prophet to lay hands on me. But the prophet always won't give you good news. They won't allow you to always have these, oh yeah, God's going to bless me with some money. God's going to bless me with finances. God's going to give me all these great things. A prophet doesn't always just give you good news like that. Sometimes the news that the prophet will give you will not be nothing that you will be excited to hear. And the pro this prophet, um, Deborah, she was so keen to what God was saying to her that it had to happen. Because what the Spirit of the Lord says among his people, it will happen. It says, J.L., Went to, I'm, in, I'm in Judges chapter 4, verse 18. It says, J.L. went out to meet Caesarea and said to him, Come, my Lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. Now, she calls him Lord, L-O-R-D, lowercase. Not Lord as in Yahweh or not Lord as in, you know, God, Jehovah. But Lord, knowing that he was a um, hierarchy, right? I just want you to know that when she said my Lord, because she knew he was in position. He had status. Um, so he entered her tent and she covered him with a blanket. He said, I'm thirsty. Please give me some water. Now, you know, he'd been running. He'd been fled, he fled, fled on foot. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there? Say no. So he was already preparing her. For the people to come to kill him. She, he already knew that Barack and I was after him. Now she has a full understanding why he's in her tent. Now she know that he's in, in, not in order. She knew that something was wrong. She seen him running. She seen him sweating. She seen him panting. She knew that something was wrong. But now she definitely knew. God gave her a full insight of what was going on. So it says, stand in the doorway. She's like, okay, cool. I got you. I'm going to stand in the doorway, but I'm going to get you first. <laughs> it says, but J.L., Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg. Now, a tent peg, you know the pegs that go in the tent when, when you at a, a park and you try to hold the tent down so that no wind can blow your tent away. You have to be strong enough. To put this tent in the ground so that it won't move. I just asked Rashana yesterday. I said, Rashana, can I use your tent at the Juneteenth um, um, event because I don't have a tent? And she said, yeah, it's, it's a nice tent. You just pop it up and it'll sit there. And I said, well, do you have the pegs to go on the ground? She was like, girl, I don't I use the pegs. I'm, that's hard. It's so hard to put a tent peg in the ground. You need strength. Well, JL, because this was her occupation, this is what she done on a consistent basis. This is who she is. She already had power in her shoulders to, to drive a tent peg in the ground that this was nothing to her to be able to take this tent peg <laughs> and a hammer and went, and she went quietly to Caesarea while he was laying fast asleep. He was so exhausted that she was able to stand over top of him and take this tent peg and drive that peg through his temple, through his head into the ground, and he died. You have to be strong to put a tent peg in somebody's head and drive it through for them to die. And I am not that strong to take a tent peg to hold down a tent. Thank God my sister's tent did not move. Thank God it wasn't no wind. Thank God that I was encased with up two other tents. That if it was some wind, my tent wouldn't move. 
but you need power. And God sent this man to this woman's tent that used what she had. She was not afraid. She was not a chump. She used her power that she had inside of her. And this is what I'm telling you women of God. That you can do not have to be afraid to stand up against the enemy. Because God knows the power that you had inside of you. He knows what you can use. He knows your vocation. He knows what you have. He knows your intelligence. He know it. And because he know it, he will allow you to use what you got to get what is necessary done. It was necessary for her to kill Caesarea because the prophet had already spoken. And she did not have no other weapon but the weapon that she used every day. She was just like Shamgar. She used the weapon that she used daily. What is your weapon? You got to use what you have in your hand. Stop expecting something big to come. God is going to use you just how you are. You don't have to change a thing. Just like Ehud, he was a left-handed man. And God did not change who he was. He used him with the power that he already had. He had power because he knew how to use his right hand and his left hand. <laughs> See, God know what you got. So stop thinking you need something greater than what you already have. JL had power. The one thing I have, I had the power of influence. I didn't realize it. And somebody said to me, she said, well, she them, um, Elder Lisa, she said years ago when I first became a minister and no matter where I went, it would be so jam packed. As soon as I tell somebody that I was going to go preach, it would be packed everywhere I go. And she said, you have the spirit to galvanize. She said, you are a great evangelist. And at that time, I just became a minister, so I didn't know what that meant. And I was like, the galvanize what? And she's like, you can bring people together so easily just by saying, come. She said, it takes nothing for you to gather people. And as time went on, I've been ministering now for almost 14 years. And now I see that no matter what I ask people to do, it's not me. It's the power that's inside of me that God used when I was young, when I didn't even know God. I had the power to influence when I would be going on ski trips, when I had bus trips, when I would have um I would have uh, parties at my ballroom, I mean at my hair salon. We I would be doing so many things as and it was so easy for me. It wasn't hard. I would fill up a bus with no problem. No matter what I said, and God used my power of influence from my carnal state now to a spiritual state. And he will do the same exact thing for you. When I was a cheerleader, I was one of the loudest cheerleaders on the squad. We had to be loud as just the high cheerleaders. And I used to be like, my teacher was like, you so loud, but she could be quiet. You so loud, you so loud. And I used to be so loud in class that God used what I had. <laughs> he used what I had. For his kingdom. Now I'm loud teaching the word of God. I didn't have to change who I was. To be a part of the kingdom. To do God's work. God will not change you. Your personality is who you are. He will use who you are. To do the work. And because JL already was a tent maker. She already knew how to drive a peg in the ground. It was nothing for her to look at him. It was like I'm going to kill this fool. I'm going to do this work real fast. Why he all exhausted? I'm going to stand in front of the enemy and I'm going to kill him. See, you got to use what already is your power. You have a power source inside of you. And the Holy Spirit does the work. You don't got to do a lot of nothing. Just rely on God. Stop relying on self. Everything I do, I rely on God. I ask God, God, you take control. You use me. Speak through me. Not me. Remove me. Remove Rashida. And you do the work. I'm telling y'all, it blows my mind every time I get up to preach. It blows my mind every time I get on Bible study. When I see people at Walmart and Wawa and they tell me I read the Bible. I'm, I'm in Samuel with you. I'm doing what you said. I fasted with you. I'm doing the work. And I'm like, for real? And they're like, yeah. I was at the basketball for violence. And I was doing a, um, minute, I was doing a, um, outreach with the um, Leaders United on the Frontline Ministerium. And one, one Muslim sister came up to me. She, um, she's at the sister, um, restaurant over by the train station. 
And she's like, she, I'm like, hey, boo, how you been? Oh, my gosh. And the last time I seen her, she wasn't wrapped up. So she was wrapped. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I said, you look so beautiful. And she's like, I know, I know. I said, she said, I know I'm a Muslim sister now. She said, but well, she did, you don't know. I listen to you every single Sunday morning. She said, but I need you to friend me on Facebook because I lost your page and I can't hear you no more. And I friended her right then and there. Because she like, I need to hear you. She said, if nothing else, I got to hear your word. She said, I receive your word every time I hear it. And I'm like, for real? And it blew my mind. Not because she was a Muslim sister, but because she said, I get up every Sunday morning. People get up to listen to the word of God. And I'm like, God, you just using me. And it's not me. I just take my time and study. I do what God told me to do. I do what he, he called me to do. When I say yes, I met my yes. And when Deborah was called to be the judge over Israel, she said yes. And she did not stop until it was completed. When the people came to her, she did what was called up, up for her, a call upon for her. So you got to be the same way. Whatever God called you to do, whatever your purpose is on earth, you got to know that it's not you. It's the power working through you, through Jesus Christ. He will give you the power to do it. So I'm not special. JL was a special. Deborah was a special. Guess what? They let the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God do the work. And you got to know that God will do it for you. It says in Judges chapter 4. Verse 22, it says, now after, after he died, it says, just then Barak came by in pursuit of Caesarea and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said. Now she see Barak coming, the commander of the army. She see him coming and she like, come here. I know why you running. I know what you're doing. I know what you want. And she says, Come. I will show you the man you're looking for. <laughs> so he went in with her. He got excited. He like, yo, I want to get him. I'm going to kill him. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm right there. I got it. I got it. He probably was so hyped again. He about to kill this man. It says, and there lay Caesarea with the tent peg through his temple, dead. Barack thought, that he was going to be able to kill this man. But just like Deborah told him, you will not get the honor of saying you killed this man because you was afraid to do it by yourself. You needed me to go with you. And Deborah, a lot of us are Deborahs on this line. A lot of stuff won't get done until you go. A lot of businesses won't be able to succeed if you don't go. A lot of households won't be able to be in peace if you are not there. A lot of jobs won't be able to be done. I mean, it will not if it's not if it wasn't because of you. A lot of stuff will not be able to be handled if it wasn't for a woman. Some women are necessary for certain situations. Don't think. Don't count yourself out because you're a woman. Don't feel like it won't get done because you're a woman. Don't be afraid to say, I got it. I can do it. I'm strong enough to do it because you're a woman. Because you're surrounded by a whole bunch of men. I'm telling you that God does the work. It's not you. So don't look at your gender. God don't care about gender. He care about who has the power, who's faithful, who can do it. And it says on verse 23, Judges chapter 4, verse 23, it says, On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. All because of Deborah. Somebody say, All because of a woman. That will, there will be a woman for the job. Some women is necessary to get the job done. And maybe it's you. And God is waiting for you to answer the call. He's waiting for you to say yes. He's waiting for you to say, I can do it. He's waiting for you to take the power that you have inside of you and try not to change nothing and stand up and say, yes, I can do it. 
Yes, I can get it done. I know nobody used me before, but now because I know the word of God, because I have the power inside of me that I can say yes again. And yes, knowing that this time when I say yes, I'm saying yes with God. So today, not do not be afraid like Barack was to say, but if you go, I'll go with you. No. You say, okay, that's the command. I got it. And you ask God to go before you. And God, you do it. Every time I do anything, I ask God to go before me. Before I get on here to pray, I pray before I get on here. I'm on my knees before I get on this live. Because God knows what his children need. I don't know what they need. But he knows what every single daughter on this line needs. Every single son on this line needs. He knows what you need to continue to go on. So if you need the power, take up this word from Deborah. And do what God said. To follow the commands. She was the judge for years. For years. And was not afraid. She was not afraid to handle the disputes. For the Israelites. So today. I charge you. To go in power. To not be afraid. Of the hand of the enemy. Because the enemy will come. But I'm telling you. You got to use what you already have. You are a glory carrier. So no matter, no matter where you show up. God is with you. Most gracious eternal father. We bless your holy and righteous name. Father we thank you. We love you. We honor you. God we lift you up this morning. Father we thank you so much for the encouragement. God we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for this prophet. This woman of God. That was not afraid to fight the battle. Father she was not afraid to go up with Barak. With the 10,000 troop. A woman. Standing by the side of a man to get the work done. To kill Caesarea and his 900 troops. She was not afraid. So God, I ask you to remove the fear from anybody that's on this line today. Any woman or man. Any man that's on here. God, I ask you to remove the fear. Let them not have fear like Barack had. But let them know they are strong enough to get the job done. That they don't got to wait on a woman. That they can do it. That they are a soldier. That they're strong enough to do it. Father, I thank you. I honor you. God, let me be the example of what it looks like to say yes and not fall. Father, I thank you for your children, for your daughters and your sons. Father, there might be somebody on this line that do not know you in the part of their sins. And they want to have a relationship with you. It might be somebody on here that had fallen back in their old ways. And they knew God. They know who Jesus is. And they have had a relationship before, but they have fallen back into sin. And they want to rededicate themselves. They have backslidden. And God, today, I want you, I want them to know that you are married to the backslider, that you love them in spite of. So, Father, today, for anybody that's on here that do not know you in the part of their sins, if they can repeat after me with a sincere heart, your word said that the minute they <clears throat> believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, they will be saved. So, if you repeat after me with a sincere heart, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, and I believe you came to earth. And I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe you shed your blood for me. And I believe you rose from the dead. Right now, I come to you, Lord Jesus, because I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Make me clean. And I will be clean. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I no longer belong to Satan. I belong to you. I am forever yours. And I am now saved. Amen, 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 amen. I love y'all. God bless you. Listen, I got a few announcements. I'm going to tell these announcements today. Now, I'm going to send the flyer to our um, page today. However, I'm going to put a link on my Facebook page that I want you to fill out. And that link will drive you to my um, updates that I give out weekly. So I would like for you to fill out this form. It's a very short form. It's just your name and your phone number. And that phone number will automatically allow you to receive text messages from SGS Ministry. But on Saturday, June 22nd, I would love for you to come out as the voices of SGS will be singing at Murphy Asbury Church at 12 o'clock. We, um, we will be singing praise and worship. So I would love for you to come out to worship with us on July 11th at um, the Look Forward um event space. It's called Look Forward Event Space in Chester, downtown Chester. We will be having a gospel karaoke event. It's on a Thursday night at 6 o'clock from 6 to 9. 
<coughs> we're trying, the businesses down Chester is trying to have different stuff during the weekday so that we can have an opportunity to come outside. I know a lot of us, you know, used to going to karaoke in a bar and used to doing things that they feel like they got to be in a bar to have fun. But I, my mandate is to make sure that I find ways for us to enjoy life without having to go back to our old ways. So one of the things that a couple of the um, vendors down at the city of Chester felt that we would have different events for us to do. So one of the events was going to be gospel karaoke again. I really enjoyed that. Um, we'll have gospel karaoke, but we'll be serving food this time for you to purchase. Um, this place only holds 100 people. So please get your tickets early. It's $10 um, if you're doing um, Zelle. But if you're doing Cash App, it'll be $12 because Cash App is charging. Also, on July 19th, I will be having um, bingo at the ballroom. That's on a Friday. Um, at six to um six to ten, we'll be having bingo, um, and we'll be having a DJ. So we'll be having a little line dancing while we doing bingo in the beginning, and um, just have a little bit of line dancing at the end, just to have a little bit of fun, um, with bingo. Um, I know a lot of people would love bingo, and before I put it on Facebook, I wanted to make sure that you guys was able to buy your tickets first. The tickets are thirty dollars, which will give us ten games. You will receive your packet when you come to the ballroom, um. And it's 100 seats in there as well. I think I'm going to do it in both rooms, depending on the amount of people that I have. But right now, the first room is available, and that, that holds 100 people. Um, and then July 26th, we'll be having um, an event in the ballroom. It's called the AV, um, where the Chester old Chester Booter used to be at, where they used to sell shoes. Well, that's a venue space now. And they'll be having spoken word, poetry, and karaoke in that room on July 26th. And those tickets are $10 as well. So whatever um, in the month of July, if you're able to come out to anything, try to come out to at least one thing, just a fellowship, just to have a good time um, during the summertime as we're out. Also, we are reading the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. We are on chapter 9 today. Please read your word. I know y'all are enjoying it. It is a really good um, book. I've been enjoying it so much. So I hope that you're um, enjoying it. Reading. I hope that you come out. I hope that you purchase your tickets. I will be putting a flyer on Facebook next Saturday. So I'm giving you guys the first opportunity. After I put it on Facebook, I cannot hold any tickets. I'm only holding these tickets for SGS right now. Um, the first hundred tickets. And after that, they'll be going. So you have the first dibs. I'm telling you, I'm celebrating my birthday on July 11th. Please come out. I hope that you can make it. I'm going to have a good, good time. We're having karaoke and gospel music and R&B. So you better see some R&B as well. I love y'all. Have an amazing Monday. And I pray that you use your power to kill the enemy in this season. God bless you. Have an amazing day.